Welcome to the 2018 West Boylston Candidates Forum, sponsored by the Item Newspaper and West Boylston Public Access. Tonight, we'll be meeting candidates for Selectmen, School Committee, and Planning Board. My name is Gary Hutner. I don't have a name tag here. I'm publisher of the item, and I'll be your moderator tonight. Before we get started, um, we, of course, want to encourage you to vote. Voting is Tuesday, June 5th, noon to 8, at Our Lady of Good Counsel Church at 111 Worcester Street. Um, we're going to start with selectmen, but before we get started, um, a little bit about the ground rules. Two minutes. Everything is two minutes. You have two minutes for opening statements, two minutes for your answers, two minutes for your closing statements. So if you can remember two minutes, you're good to go. Ken Cleveland, right over there, is the timer. So when you have 30 seconds left at a minute 30, he'll hold up a sign. So try and look up every once in a while when you're talking. And then if you go all the way to two minutes, he'll hold up the red stop sign, which tells you your time is up. So we're going to start with selectmen. We have candidates Patrick Crowley and John Hadley, who are both incumbents. Robert Chisholm, a third candidate, dropped out and um, is not here. But his name will still appear on the ballot since he withdrew after the deadline. So we're going to start with um, Mr. Crowley and Mr. Hadley um, with opening statements. And we'll start with um, Mr. Crowley. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Pat Crowley. I'm here tonight to ask for your vote for selectmen on June 5th. Although Bob Chisholm, who was instrumental in convincing the town to approve the new senior center, has decided to drop out of the race, John and I felt it was important to proceed with the candidates forum so that the voters would have the opportunity to ask us questions about our future plans for the town. For those of you who don't know me, my wife Kimberly and I have been raising our three children, Megan, Leah, and Jack, in West Boylston for the past 14 years. I'm a CPA and the owner of a tax accounting firm in Worcester, and I also recently retired as a lieutenant colonel after serving 22 years in the Massachusetts Army National Guard. Prior to being elected as a selectman, I was on the Finance Committee and the Capital Investment Board. Being a member of these two boards gave me a unique perspective into the finances of the town. Since my election, I have worked with the town's finance team during budget development and throughout the year when fiscal questions arose. I look at most decisions we make for the town from a financial perspective, and I'm known as the numbers guy by John and the other members of the Board of Selectmen. I plan to continue to bring a fresh financial perspective to all decisions the board makes over the next three years to ensure the taxpayer's money is being used in the smartest way possible. Anyone who is here in the audience tonight or watching this on TV clearly cares about the future of our town. West Boylston is a small town and unlike the larger towns and cities in the surrounding area, one person can really make a difference and change the way things are in our town, as Bob did with the Senior Center. I encourage any of you that are not actively involved in the town to step up and volunteer your time to be on a board or committee. You'll be amazed at how much you can get accomplished and how much better you can make West Boylston by just dedicating a few hours a month of your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Crowley. Mr. Hadley. Thank you, everybody. My name is John Hadley, and I'm asking for your vote for a third term. Over the last six years, I feel the board has accomplished a great deal, including the purchase of a new town hall building a much-needed police station, and we just broke ground on a much-delayed but certainly needed senior community center. We have paved many miles of uh, road and installed many sidewalks. To increase safety, we have installed solar pilot stop signs. These are just a few of the things we have accomplished in a short time. Most important, these were accomplished with a small impact on property taxes and without decrease in any public safety services. We have worked to bring new businesses into town, including Curtis Industries, which added 150 jobs. Coughlin Electric is set to bring in 125 new jobs. These employees will bring new business to our local stores and restaurants and will help them succeed. I am asking for your vote and want to thank you for allowing me the honor to represent the town of West Polson. Thank you. Um, we had a phone ring. We had thunder outside. So we're off to a good start here on, on the oh. questions. <laughs> um, We'll start with the first question. We're going to start with Mr. Crowley. West Boylston has seen some developments, especially lo along Route 12, as well as with numerous housing developments. What is your vision for the future of building in West Boylston, and how would you help work with other boards and commissions to make sure there is a unified vision for the future of the town and a plan to get there? 
I think the town does a good job uh, amongst the boards uh, of doing just that to make sure that all the boards are working together. Uh, we, are, we have a housing consultant that is monitoring our uh, low-income housing uh, to help control 40B projects. 40B projects uh, tend to be larger scale and have a lot more burden on the community resources. Uh, and so we, we are, we did just have one go up. We are, we are at or approaching our 10 percent uh, of affordable housing limit, which means we're moving forward, we can limit what affordable housing projects come into town and limit the impact we have. The Economic Development Committee has done an excellent job with uh, attracting new businesses. We had, as, as John just said, we had Curtis uh, that already came in. We have another employer uh, that's going to bring 100 to 150 more jobs into town. Uh, so I think we need to continue to push uh, for the uh, building of businesses and, and getting businesses into the town. We don't have all that much land left because of the reservoir, so we're not going to have that, that much more uh, large-scale projects that are going to be able to move into town for housing purposes. But it, it is important to try to keep attracting businesses uh, which increase the tax base while using very little of the resources of the town. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hadley? On Route 12, there's not a lot of new properties, but the ones that are there, we need to uh, like to be rehabilitated because there's several properties that are down and trodden and stuff like that. So we are working with them. We have something called the round table where all the businesses come to us and we ask them what we can do to help expedite the uh, ways that we can make the business easier for them to get their permits. And as far as the housing, I think the, the biggest concern we have is the housing for the elderly. We have a lot of elderly people that would like to stay in town, but we don't have any place to put them. So I think that's one of our biggest goals in the next couple of years is get something for them to live in, and then we can take their houses and get some younger families in their houses. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, this question, we'll, we'll start with you, Mr. Hadley, and um, you both touched on this a little bit, but uh, maybe you can elaborate. While the town has had two major commercial businesses come to town in the past few years, retail establishments have not fared as well, with several closing their doors. How do you see the town encouraging small business to remain and thrive in West Boylston? Well, economic development, we, we, have, we go around to all small businesses. We have tried to have bi-monthly or monthly meetings with them and see if they can but we need to help them. I know signage is a big problem in town. Everybody complains about the signage. It's not fair. It's too small. People can't see it. That's one of the bigger things. In restaurants, we need to bring some more quality restaurants. We've had a few fail in the last few years, and that's something we need to work on to get them in here. But it's definitely something to do with the, the town is willing to work with anybody that wants to come to the town. We're very helpful. We're working with everybody. Okay. Mr. Crowley? Uh, while there have been some businesses that have, left for one reason or another or, or have uh, failed. We've had many more businesses uh, in the past three years since I've been on the board that have come in and opened up shop in West Boyles and then have actually failed. You do see that when, when a business, is, business goes out of business, everybody goes, oh, wow, why'd they go out of business? But for every one that has gone out of business, we've had three or four that have opened up and, and are thriving. Uh, the, in order to encourage small businesses to come into town. It's important to encourage the large businesses with the people that are going to go out to lunch, that are going to maybe do some shopping uh, before or after work. Uh, so it goes hand in hand that you need, we do need to attract the larger businesses with the employees that will spend their money uh, in West Boylston. But all in all, uh, we, we're, we're on the uptick as far as what's happening with businesses in this town. There's more coming in than, are, than there are that are failing. When one fails, it's sometimes there's something the town could have done, sometimes there's nothing the town could have done. But like John said, the town uh, committees and boards are always willing to work with and listen to businesses uh, and hopefully help them uh, to be successful. Okay. All right. Mr. Crowley, we'll start with you on this, the last question, actually. The town has undertaken several major b town building projects in the past five years. Town Hall, the police station, and now the senior center. What other construction projects do you see coming down the road in the next five years? And if there are any, how do you see the town, the town selling that to voters? Uh, the, in the, within the next five years, I would anticipate that we're going to see the uh, police, the, excuse me, the fire station uh, be rehab rehabilitated. We don't have any pricing on it. Uh, we did take care of the asbestos that's in there. But within the next five years, that'll be the, the project that gets, uh, that gets done. As we did with the Senior Center, we will present 
options to the town. We presented a used building for the senior center and the town gave us a resounding, no, we don't want that. It's not good enough for our seniors. We went back to the table and we said, hey, this is the new senior center that you guys uh, said you wanted and the town passed it. How are we gonna sell it to the, the town is, this is our fire station. Take a look at it, walk through it. Would you wanna work in that building? The projects that we just did, the timing was not on accident. We had a large amount of debt coming off of the tax rolls. The first two projects that we did did not increase the tax base via Prop 2.5, which is outside of your normal property tax base. Those two projects were fully paid for by money that was coming off the debt rolls. The senior center did increase the tax base, uh, and when we eventually get around to doing the fire station, uh, that too will be an increase to the tax base. Okay. Mr. Hadley? I agree with uh, Mr. Crowley. The fire station is probably our next project, but it's not going to be a uh, total rebuild like we did in the police station or the uh, senior center. It's going to be something more of a rehab because the building itself is pretty solid. We've had engineers look at it. The rest of the buildings in town, DBW, is very solid. We had a good, good engineer report on that. Um, the schools down the road, maybe, we might be talking to them, but we haven't talked to them yet about it. There's, we've done, we, did, we, hadn't, we didn't do anything for a long time in this town. A long time and we, now we have the three buildings we we do have we're very proud of them and it's, it's something that should have been done a long time so everything was done at once and like Pat said we were able to do it without with a small increase in taxes nothing huge a lot of towns you know take a lot of more override than we had for this so I'm very proud of that that we, we were able to work with everybody together on that okay um, those were our three questions but since we went right through them quickly we'll throw another one at you um, you may have hit a little bit this in your opening statement, but if you had to pick one priority facing the town, the top priority, what would that be, Mr. Okay. Hadley? Uh, it's definitely senior housing. There's no question about it. We need, uh, like I said before, we have a lot of seniors that live in the houses. They can't afford the houses as it is now, and they need a place to stay. The lifelong residents, we have no place to put them as at this moment. So. We are working on something like that in town right now, and it's something that I think is probably our greatest need right now. Okay, thank you. Mr. Crowley. Uh, I'm not going to steal John's answer. I do agree that senior housing is, is of the utmost importance, and, and we are lacking it, and there are things in the works. Um, uh, being business friendly, I think, is the most important thing to this town. Um, and we are working on, we've started down the road of trying to make it easier for businesses to come to this town. Uh, a lot of feedback that we got was, it's so hard to get through all of the process. And, and a lot of that is a function of, we're all volunteer boards. So if you go to the city of Worcester, you, you meet with the planning people, they say come back, you can come back the next day with what they asked for. When you come here, you gotta wait two weeks. And if you don't, if, it's, if all the I's are dotted and the T's aren't crossed, you might have to wait another two weeks. So we're, got, we're working on streamlining the process. That's one of our goals the Board of Selectmen is working on, to try to attract businesses and not make it so difficult to come into town. Overall, we have gotten good feedback that once they get through the process, these businesses are happy that they came here, but it's, it is a cumbersome process that we need to streamline. Okay, okay thank you very much. Um, those are our four questions. Uh, closing statements, Mr. Crowley. Um, again, I'm Pat Crowley. I'm asking for your vote on June 5th. Um, and I know John and I don't have uh, an opponent. Bob will be on the, on the um, ballot, but he has dropped out. Uh, I just, I really encourage anybody who's watching this, please take the time to volunteer. This town is run by volunteers. Nobody on any of these boards are making any money. Uh, the, the town cannot function without good people stepping up to volunteer their time in any capacity. You, can, you don't have to volunteer for a, you know, a zoning board of appeals, which takes up a tremendous amount of time. It, there's a bunch of different things that you can do to help out in this town that will benefit everybody and make the town a better place for everybody that lives here. Thank you. Mr. Hadley. I agree with Pat. I mean, I think what Pat said, the volunteers make this town go, uh, it happens. We, I mean, Pat and I, we probably spend 10 to 15 hours a week on the Board of Selectmen because we're on different committees. And I don't, you don't have to spend that much time, but I you know an hour or two, three hours a week, and it would do so much because other people, once they see someone else doing, they might want to do it. We get some younger people involved, 
this town is built on volunteers, like Pat said, and that's what's the most important thing for us. Okay. Well, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to transition to school committee now and invite our three candidates, James Pedoni, Jason Ponticelli, and John Riley, to the um, to the table. Okay, as we get set for the school committee portion of our candidates forum, I'll point out to those of you watching this now or later, though later is now for you if you're watching it, um, Mr. Padoni and Mr. Ponticelli are the incumbents. There are two seats open and um, Mr. Riley is the challenger, so uh, we have three candidates for two positions. Um, we're going to start with opening statements. Again, I'm sure you were all here, but point out again, Ken Cleveland will hold that up at a minute 30, showing you that you need to wrap it up. And if you're going too long, he'll throw up the stop sign. You'll have two minutes for opening statements, two minutes for questions, and two minutes for closing statements. We have three questions for you, um, but we'll start with um, opening statements. And Mr. Pedoni, if you want to start. Hello, my name is James Pedoni. I'm here to ask for your vote on June 5th. Um, just a quick background of myself, I'm a lifelong resident, a uh, graduate uh, of uh, West Boylston High School. I volunteered um, many different aspects of uh, youth sports from football, baseball, softball over the years. Um, this is my second term. I'm just completing my second term of the school committee. Um, I decided to get on the school committee originally when I was completing my master's degree. And at the time, I was involved with many dis different aspects of education through work with uh, universities and um, uh, an area of technology that really uh, excited me. So I wanted to really start to figure out what to do with my free time after I was done with my degree. So I wanted to invest in the school systems here. I have two young kids in the elementary school, one who will be transitioning to the middle school. And to me, the school system um, has, I have a great passion for its success. And I want to be able to take my abilities and work through some of the difficulties that we have to make it a better school system for our children. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Ponticelli. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Ponticelli. I'm running for re-election. I'm asking for uh, the citizens' vote for, uh, for re-election. I'm the father of two wonderful children who both go to Major Edwards, much like Mr. Pedoni, and uh, one of which is transitioning to the middle school next year. Um, I've been an educator, actually. I'm a middle school teacher. I've been an educator for 14 years now. There's not much I know about, but I do know about education. And this was my way to give back to the community, much like Mr. Pedoni had stated. Uh, I've earned a bachelor's degree and master's degree in middle school education. And I believe as an educator, father, and citizen of West Boylston, I've offered a unique perspective during my tenure on the school committee. I was appointed by the selectmen and the school committee two years ago to fill a position that was um, a resigned uh, committee member. And I um, ran for election last year and won. And I'm looking to be reelected to continue the great work we've done thus far. Um, I firmly believe in fostering an educational experience guided by high expectations, ample opportunity for exploration and creativity, and one enriched by family and community involvement, all the while promoting a safe environment where our children of West Boylston can grow academically, emotionally, and socially. West Boylston students should leave our classrooms with a sit, uh, set of skills of collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and all around life skills of that of a 21st century learner. Our schools should be the pride of our community, something I firmly believe in. It's imperative for the school committee to work extensively with all contributors to the district, teachers, faculty, administrators, central office personnel, parents, and students alike. And I feel during my tenure as a school committee member, we've done just that. I'd very much like to continue serving the community as a member of the West Boylston School Committee and continue the great work we've done thus far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Riley. 
Yes, my name is uh, John Riley. I'm a candidate for the uh, Worcester West Boylston uh, School Committee. And uh, the reason why I'm running, I am a retired principal. I've been in education for over 35 years. It's been a varied experience. Uh, I was a teacher in the, in the Worcester Public Schools. I was uh, also an assistant principal, a principal. So I've had varied experiences, not only in public education, but also in parochial and religious education. I uh, was born and raised in Worcester. I've been in town the last uh, 12 years and gotten to know some of the schools and how well they are doing. Uh, my education experience, I graduated from Assumption College with a degree in uh, foreign affairs and education. Uh, I was able to uh, live out that experience uh, about foreign affairs because after I retired, I went to uh, China and I was an SAT teacher over there for two years and uh, it really gave me a different perspective of what uh, education is like there and here and how lucky actually we are uh, to have the education experience we, uh, we do have. And now as a school committee candidate, uh, my vision is uh, to continue the communication, uh, promote uh, efficient and timely communication between the school district and the citizens of uh, West Boylston. Also with the budget, I think uh, continue to uh, strengthen our school system while maintaining a fiscally responsible budget. And the other area is curriculum, continue to pursue curriculum programs that meet the needs of uh, all our students, and uh, especially looking at programs that maybe where uh, uh, we, we can try to house as many programs in our own district versus sending students outside of the district. So I, I'd like to raise that question and look at it to see if there's any way that uh, we can uh, have a, a, a good discussion about that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, question one, we'll start with Mr. Panicelli. Um, question we finished with the selectmen on what's what do you think the biggest issue facing the West Boylston schools is and how as a member of the West Boylston School Committee would you address that um, I, I believe the biggest issue we're facing right now is, is not just continuing the path we're on but but increasing what we can do for our students um, much to like what mr. Riley was, was alluding to the idea that uh, we need to continue um, offering curriculum that is challenging um, that's enriching uh, and I realize there have been issues in regards to um, placement outside of district for uh, vocational schools, um, but there's no reason why maybe sometime down the road we can't offer some programs that are uh, along those lines up at the high school for a student who might not uh, elect to uh, apply for a vocational school. But, um, you know, there's a lot of competitive school districts in central Massachusetts. Um, my vision is for West Boylston to be at the top of that list. Uh, we're a small town, big heart. And we're a small district. Uh, in this district, I believe parents will agree with me that um, students don't fall through the cracks here. Um, it's not just something you can look at with student to teacher ratio because um, a lot of things can hide in those types of numbers in varying districts. But here, um, with our students and our children, they don't fall through the cracks. And uh, we need to give them every opportunity they can to excel. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Riley. Yes, I think uh, the issue uh, with the West Boylston schools is, is how I see it is, is, is right now we're, we're doing pretty good. And it's, it might be easy to kind of look at, uh, when I say pretty good, uh, our uh, uh, MCAS scores and, and other programs that we have. And yet good is, is, is not enough. How can we become better and improve every year? And is, it, is there a way of just measuring how we get better every year? One of the best ways is as far as uh, how families feel about our schools and how much, uh, and I know uh, Mr. Crowley uh, mentioned this, how much do we get participation as far as volunteers in the schools? Because again, uh, those are signs of the fact that people enjoy our schools, they like staying there, they're proud of them, and yet, uh, the other area is what programs do we have that people uh, want, uh, want their kids to have that will have them stay there, uh, stay here in the school district. And, and again, by the time uh, they become seniors, uh, you know, uh, what is it uh, that, that these kids, especially the seniors, are so proud of as far as 
uh, the West Boylston School. So there's those types of areas uh, uh, looking at how do we, uh, again, uh, measure we're getting better along the way, even outside of MCAS. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Bedoni. So one of the biggest problems I think we face is unfunded and poorly funded state mandates. There are a lot of different areas in education where the state mandates that we need to um, provide services or pay for certain um, pieces of, you know, a student's education, for example. Um, out of district placement for special education. The, we are responsible for most of that. There is some uh, funding that comes with that, but you know the town is responsible for the large majority of it, and it takes up a good portion of our um, budget. These are, this is one big example where we should have additional funding from the state to be able to take care of situations like this. Um, I'm also a member of the legislative sub subcommittee on the school committee, and we look at some of these state mandates and try to work with uh, local legislators, uh, you know, Representative O'Day, Senator Chandler, on looking at um, changing some of these laws and getting additional funding for certain areas that we currently don't have any funding for. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question, we're going to start with Mr. Riley. The school committee has building renovations or a new building in its five-year plan. The town has recently completed work on the town offices and built a new police station and have begun work on a new senior center. And as we heard earlier, the fire department building will need work in the next few years. Do you support a renovation or new construction? And if so, how would you convince residents that the work is necessary and worth the additional taxes? Well, I, I would say as far as as far as the school building, it's, it's, it's really a community. And I don't have to tell anyone here that one of the ways that, uh, that people come to town and want to come to the, to, uh, want to come to the schools uh, is, 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 is the fact that uh, real estate values are, are, are continuing to go up. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, is, is the fact that if we can get uh, if, if we're able to continue to increase the value of real estate in our, in our community, and uh, those are positive signs of the fact that uh, we can look at the whole issue of the schools down the road. Because uh, again, uh, uh, I don't have to tell people about the fact that schools uh, are the center of the community, and uh, they are getting to a point where we really do have to look at it seriously. And, and again, we've looked at senior housing and the fire station, but I, uh, again, I support schools strongly, and I, I want to see uh, uh, where we can go with that. And, and again, uh, uh, real estate values reflect how good a school system is. So uh, we really, uh, uh, we really do need to look at that, and, and I think more sooner than later. Mr. Pedoni. So first, I think um, a five-year plan is a little aggressive, um, although, you know, it would be great to be within a five-year window. Um, however, based on the two main buildings, the Major Edwards building, um, I don't really support renovation or large renovation projects. I think we need to keep it going right now until we could find a, a suitable replacement for that building. However, the Middle High is in very good shape um, it's, a, it's a great building and has a lot of potential. Um, ideally, um, personally, I would feel that we would reposition the schools and convert the middle high into the elementary school and build a new middle high school. I think that would better serve the town and, and be better use of uh, a new construction project. Um, this would give us the opportunity to build a, a better size you know, gymnasium, for example, because the current gymnasium at the middle high school is more like a middle school gym. We can't do a lot of um, big tournaments and, and things like that. It'll give us opportunity to create um, bigger labs, science labs, and, and other types of technology labs. So I think putting the money towards a new high school and repurposing the current high school as an elementary school is probably the best use of, of dollars. Um, again, five years seems a little quick, but um, you know we need to start talking about that now because it's a long process. Okay. Mr. Panicelli. Um I'll echo a lot of what Mr. Perdoni said. I, I was a member of the strategic planning committee that put together the, um, the draft of the five-year plan that Dr. Shopper uh, presented to the community. Uh, we have um, the school committee, or the school district, I apologize, has submitted a statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, 
So, you know, that's the first crucial step. Uh, we will be meeting uh, soon with the Board of Selectmen um, and other community members uh, to really discuss the process. I do agree with Mr. Padoni that five years is uh, kind of soon, um, but it is a reality. It's something that needs to be addressed in this community. As I said before, our schools should be the pride of our community. Uh, Mr. Riley alluded to um, property values. Um, new families are going to come to West Boylston by looking at a couple of new schools. That's what's going to draw them here. They're going to learn that this school, this, I'm sorry, this community is a wonderful community to raise families. Uh, and um, it's the reason why we came here, my, my family. We moved here four years ago, and I wanted this district. I knew um, educators in this district. I have known Dr. Shopper. And, um, you know, it all goes down to the fact that our students don't fall through the cracks, like I said before. But going back to building of schools, uh, definitely important, something that we are looking at now, we're going to continue. And ideally, we'll have uh, at least one new school building uh, in this town, hopefully within 10 years. Okay. Thank you very much. Third question, we'll start with Mr. Pedoni. Um, at least two housing developments are underway or have recently been approved. How do you see the school committee working to incorporate the students who will be coming into the district plus pay for the extra costs included or involved? So uh, currently we have, um, well, this alludes back to the facilities um, comment from the previous question. So if, if this happened sooner rather than later, then we would have a, a, a bigger need. And that's something that the statement of interest that Mr. Ponticelli discussed would um, help, help move us along the process a little sooner. Um, currently in the middle high, there's room and we have school choice students. Uh, we purposely took less school choice students this year just in case that there was an influx of students. So we have the ability to manage this at some level um, and right now we're being cautious. Uh, there is a, a large waiting list for school choice students so which actually speaks to our district of how students actually want to come to this district to learn. Um, so we're just managing it at that level at this point in time because truly it's, it's an unknown. So we're, we're trying to be cautious to be prepared for that. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Ponticelli. Um, really to echo again what Mr. Pedoni said, the, the, uh, the, the two new housing developments, um, Dr. Shopper recommended that we um, limit the school choice numbers coming into our district uh, for the for, for next 2018-2019 uh, school year uh, because we're not quite sure what um, the number of students that might be moving into the community. Um, we do have space as of right now um, however, if those numbers are a little bit higher than expected, um, something might have to be done. We want our school and our, our class sizes to remain low. Uh, that way our students get the attention they, they deserve and that they need to excel. Um, but again, we haven't seen the influx in numbers yet. It's not to say that they won't be coming. Okay. And Mr. Riley. Yeah, I think uh, a, a couple issues here that uh, as far as new students coming in, I think it's important that you are able to have these families who are coming into the school maybe uh, a few months before have like uh, uh, an open house or something where they feel welcome here into the school system. And that's something that the superintendent, the principals can really uh, organize if it continues to grow the way it should. Because the goal, I, I think, for school choice, uh, if you can argue it, is to get down to zero. So uh, again, uh, if, if we are a district that's appealing to uh, families uh, in central Massachusetts, then uh, I, I think that's a good thing. And, and again, we want to we wanna get the leadership, the administration involved in situations where uh, you would anyways wel welcome, uh, there's always new families moving in, but is there a way where with the two housing developments, we can even look at that uh, a little bit closer to make sure that we're ahead of the curve and making uh, families feel welcome here. Okay. Okay, we're gonna jump into your closing statements and we'll start with Mr. Ponticelli. Uh, again, my name is Jason Ponticelli. I'm asking for re-election to the school committee. Uh, as I stated in a couple of my answers, um, I don't know much, but I do know education. And uh, we picked uh, my family, my wife and I, and my, my two kids, we, we moved to West Boylston for a reason. It is a small town with a large heart or big heart, uh, and the school district is uh, stellar. And I knew that my students would get the attention that they uh, require to excel academically and socially and emotionally. And um, my way to give back to community 
is to volunteer my time, and that's why I ran for election to school committee. Uh, I voiced my, um, my interest, and I was appointed early on um, to fill a, a resigned position for the school committee, and as I said, ran for re uh, free election last year and running for re-election again. I've learned a lot in my 20 plus months as a school committee member, and I continue to learn. Um, I work very well with the current school committee members as well as Dr. Shopper and administration. Uh, it is a team effort and it's a team that I want to continue to be a part of. So I um, graciously ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Riley. Yes, as I mentioned in my opening statement, I, I grew up in Worcester. I was, I'm part of a big family of 11 boys and five girls. And I don't have to tell you the importance of, of education as being a top priority uh, in our family. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons I went into education and uh, loved every minute of it over the last 35 years and to a point where I wanted to expand my horizons all the way over to China and experience in, uh, the education there. So I feel I'm well qualified with uh, global education and, and being able to uh, uh, help, help kids, uh, help families on, on, on both in the East and the West, as, as we like to say. So, uh, and, and again, I'll, I, I, uh, being new, I'll, I have a learning curve. I'm gonna have uh, uh, issues I wanna look at. Some uh, I'm gonna you know, rely on other school committee people to help me out with, but I feel uh, I, I, I have a lot to contribute uh, when it comes to education. Thank you very much. And Mr. Bedoni, you get the last word. Excellent. Thank you. I'm James Bedoni asking for election on uh, June 5th. Um, as I said, you know, I'm a graduate of the school system. I have a lot of passion for education and the school system. I want to continue to see it thrive and succeed um, and grow. Um, I want this for my children, for the citizens of West Boylston. Um, and I just, you know, really have a strong passion for the school system. So, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you all for you. Um, coming tonight. Um, now we're going to um, transition into the planning board. And we have candidates David Femia and Sarah Miles. <laughs> Are they both incumbents? Are there two seats available? As mentioned, we have candidates David Femia and Sarah. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly, yep. Femia? Okay. And Sarah Miles. They are candidates for the planning board. We're gonna um, we'll have two questions as well as opening and clo closing statements from them. And um, we'll start with um, their opening statements. And Mr. Femia. Good evening. My name is Dave Femia. I'm candidate for the planning board. I appreciate your vote on June fifth. Um, I've lived in this town for about 16 years now with my wife. I have three stepchildren and two grandchildren. Um, I was raised in South Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, like I said, I've been out in this community for about 18, 20 years now. Um, 1992, I retired from the United States Navy after 20 years of faithful and honorable service. And Presently, I am the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I also sit on the Council of Aging and the PEG Committee. And most people know me. They know that I'm a hard worker. I um, thrive to go out and get the job done. And I do a lot of research. And a lot of people say I spend too much time in town hall. Mr. Crowley will say, you know, go out and volunteer. Well, I'm doing just that, Mr. Crowley. So. And that's just about it. Like I said, vote on June 5th. Thank you very much. Ms. Miles. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Miles, and I am also running for the planning board. I am still 39 years old for another two weeks. <laughs> um, and I have lived in West Boylston for a little over four years. I have worked for WPI for all that time. Um, and two years ago, I transferred to my current position as the university registrar there. I have four stepsons who spend half of their time at our house, and my husband and I have another baby on the way. 
Um, so to say I'm invested in the future of West Boylston is an understatement. We have planted our roots here, um, and as we slowly remodel our old farmhouse, we do so with a mind to actually retire in that house. I am a natural born planner and administrator. Uh, the job of university registrar is to interpret and apply policy consistently and ethically, and to know when and how to make an exception, and to build and communicate process improvements that affect the entire university community. I think these are skills that are an asset to any member of any planning board. In my two short years as registrar, I have shepherded multiple policy changes through WPI's faculty governance body, and this is an exercise in patience, persuasion, negotiation, and persistence. Um, each year I also lead the team that ensures over 1,400 students participating in commencement ceremonies have their diploma placed in their hand by our president as they cross that stage. And this task requires organizing a large number of volunteers, use of technology, an intensive communication plan, and a great amount of flexibility to make that magic happen for every student. This is my first time running for local government. I'm keen to be involved for, in West Boylston's future. Um, I would like to help make smart decisions about how we grow and, and evolve, always keeping the history and spirit of this town alive. So if you want to see a dedicated, family-centered, fair-minded citizen in this seat, then I hope you will vote for me June 5th. Thank you very much. And we're going to start the first question with you. Um, development continues to be a hot-button issue with residents. How would you go about managing development through your role on the planning board to bring in revenue, adhere to the town bylaws, and keep the town character that residents want? So I, I, as a newcomer to a board like this, I would have to say I'm going to have a, a learning curve um, as I learn the bylaws and, and things like that. Um, but I would say that I would have to do a lot of research to find out um, what the town wants, what the best um, path forward for us is. And I, I, you know, I think it's really important that we try to keep the character of our town alive. That's one of the things that I really love about this town and love about living here. And so that's something I think that would, I would always have for, I mean, first and foremost in my mind as I was looking at any plan that was coming to the board. Um, and then, of course, you know, we have to stay within the laws. So that's the utmost importance. Mr. Femia. Well, the planning board is a, a unique board. They um, do a lot of dealings with uh, development and all, and it, it's kind of a difficult situation. Um, presently, uh, on the zoning board, we do the same thing. We have to deal with different situations, and especially with, when a 40B project comes in, that's where the zoning board becomes part of the, you know, the planning board. And so we have to, as far as you know, the mentality of, of the residents, of course, that's an important factor. You've got to get people on board. Um, development is is an essential thing. I know that this is a small town. There isn't a lot of land. Um, like Mr. Crowley and Mr. Hadley said, you know, you try to bring businesses in. You try to make development for people. You know, there's people that have land here that maybe isn't being used and maybe they want to try to help, you know, bring in development. It takes a lot of work. There's a lot of homework involved. I mean, I've, I've been going to planning board meetings now for the last two years, three years. And I see how these, how these people deal with different situations. And it's not easy, but, you know, there's a lot of time involved. There's a lot of effort involved. You know, you have to deal with the, with the petitioner, you know, and you try, to, you know, try to work around everything. There's a lot of zoning bylaws, bylaws that people don't understand, bylaws that the developer may not understand. It's part of the planning board to try to <coughs> implement these and try to I explain to people, you know, how things work in this town. Um, I'm a hard worker have always been a hard worker. I'm dedicated, and I, I think I'll do a good job. So a vote for me would be greatly appreciated. Okay, Ms. Femia, you kind of referenced my next question in, in this question, but it's probably a good lead-in. Um, in recent years, the planning board business includes more zoning work. An example now is the marijuana regulations the board is putting forth the town meeting next week. How do you see the planning board working with other town committees and boards in the future to to help frame the future of the town? As far as marijuana is concerned? Or, or any of the... Well, if, if you go downstairs right now, they're, doing, they're having a public hearing for the moratorium that's going to be on the, um, on the uh, town meeting. Um, you have to work with everybody. You know, I mean, right now, as far as the marijuana issue, you know, yes, the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts voted to accept it. Now it's up to in individual towns. The moratorium is to help us, you know, to 
be able to establish a zoning bylaw and to tell people where it can go, where it can't go. You know, um, I think the planning board does an outstanding job as far as zoning issues. I mean, there are zoning issues that they establish because the planning board is the one that establishes and they have they're the ones that, you know, help develop the uh, zoning bylaws. Unfortunately, there are times when the ZBA has to get involved in this because people don't like that decision, so they have to come to the ZBA and kind of, you know, we have to try to work out. But I enjoy working with the planning board as a ZBA member and, you know, whatever. And I've always had a good rapport with them. And I think that being on the planning board, I would have a good rapport with, you know, with anybody else. So uh, I, I think that they work well with everybody. And, and that's a crucial point. You have to work well. If we work well together, the job will get done a lot quicker and a lot easier. Thank you. Ms. Miles? Uh, I agree that absolutely we have to work together with all of the boards. Any um, decision like that that is going to affect the town as a, as a whole, all the boards are going to have to be involved. Um, so I think the planning board's role has to be to help make smart decisions about where these, lo uh, you know, where the businesses are going to be located, um, you know, what those zones look like, and those things. I mean. Yeah, you know, they, they just have to be, it has to be a collaborative effort. You can't, nobody can work in a silo. That's certainly something that you learn working in higher education. It's, no, no person can make a single decision that doesn't trickle down and affect a bunch of others. So it, the planning board will, should play a central role in helping that, um, those, those decisions be made. Thank you. Okay, you have a chance to give a closing statement, other things you might want to say. Ms. Miles, you want to start? Um, sure. I, I, I just really want to close up by saying I, I'm really excited about living in West Boylston. I know I'm, I'm a newbie by many standards, uh, having only lived here for four years, and I'm actually not even a Massachusetts native. I'm a Maryland native. I moved up to the Boston area in 2003 where I went to grad school. Um, but I've really found my home here. My brother has even moved up here. My parents intend to move up here now that we all have kids. And so I'm really dedicated to this area. Um, and I, I really think it's important that people get involved, whether you've been here, uh, lived here for your whole life, or you've only been here for two or three years. Volunteering, giving your time for public service is really important. Um, and I do also want to give a shout out to all the women who may be listening and who are in the audience today. Um, I'm the only female that's up here this time around. And I think it's really important that we also represent and that we take a seat at the table where we can. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm up here. And so I hope you'll vote for me on June 5th. Thank you. Mr. Femia? I think what Mr. Crowley had said about volunteering, I think that that's an essential part. You know, volunteers are what basically runs the town. The important thing is, is talking about voting. Through my whole military career, I've gone to many different countries and saw how people would just could not believe how much you know how nice it is to to be an American and you know to vote. I think voting is an important essence in in this country, and you know a lot of people say, well, you know, it's just a vote. You know, it doesn't count. In my personal opinion, everybody's vote counts. You know, whether your candidate wins or loses, it counts. You have you had a say. You wouldn't believe how many people in different countries would un would give anything to be able to have that right to be able to go to a poll and vote you know for the person so that's the important thing you know that that's what I want to close with is just go out and vote whether you vote whether you like I said whether your candidate wins or not please vote and hopefully on June 5th you'll vote for me thank you thank you both um, before we conclude tonight we also have candidates here tonight for the um, cemetery committee and um, there are two candidates running for one seat. And each candidate will, be, will have the chance to give a two-minute statement. The candidates are Dean Kachanowski and um, John McCormick. And I think they're both here. Yes, they are.
make sure you sit behind the right name. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, each candidate will have the chance to um, give a two-minute statement. Um, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Kochanowski. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dean Kochanowski, and I am running for the position of cemetery trustee. I am a lifelong resident of West Boylston and currently reside at 28 Cumberland Drive. I grew up on North Main Street in Oakdale and went through the West Boylston school system. I currently have a bachelor's degree in fire science management with a minor in business administration. And I am working towards a master's degree in public administration. I was a member of the West Boylston Fire Department for 17 years, leaving in 2007 at the rank of full-time captain. During my time in West Boylston, I was directly involved in the budget process and the administration of the department. I also served one term on the Finance Committee from 2000 to 2003. I am currently employed as a fire chief with another town in Worcester County. I have been fire chief for the past seven years and have dealt with and balanced a number of budgets in that time that have exceeded $1 million per year. I have successfully no negotiated a number of union contracts over that same period to a medium-sized workforce. I have over 15 years of experience in the municipal sector in a supervisory position. I am also a veteran, so I understand the importance of making sure a loved one or family member is well taken care of after they have moved on from this life. It would be an honor for me to be able to serve the town as a cemetery trustee. I have wanted for many years to get more involved with the town I grew up in, but up to this point, time has not allowed that. I feel that my municipal sector experience would bring some fresh and new ideas to the cemetery department. I feel that, I feel that this is a growing and changing department at this time, and I feel I could effectively run and move the department forward into the 21st century. I look forward to serving the town in this capacity and would appreciate your vote on June 5th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. McCormick. Uh, good evening. My name's uh, John McCormick. Many of you know me as Jack. Uh, I've been on the cemetery board for 20 years. It has grown. The cemetery has grown. And it's growing fast. We have a lot of new problems coming down the road, and I'm working with the selectmen now to find more space for our cemetery. We have one cemetery, by the way. It's right over here. The other two cemeteries are privately owned and uh, not under our control or our care. Job of the cemetery trustee is to safeguard the cemetery and the, and the people that are buried there. We are entrusted with your most valuable thing, your loved ones. We try to keep it up so it's a pleasant place to come visit and it's a safe place to be at. I've been in town all my life, 71 years, uh, and I've been on the fire department. I was on with Dean. Uh, in fact, I had him in school. Uh, I was a school teacher for 32 years. Uh, and I still go back and play Legos with the little kids because that's a, that's a nice thing to do with little kids. I'd like you to come out and vote. I'd like you to vote for me. But whatever you do, come out and vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we want to thank all the candidates who came tonight and, and spoke. Um, also want to um, thank both Jan Gottesman and Kristen Payson from the item who helped put this together and always do a great job with that. Um, Ken Cleveland for doing the timing. Um, again, all the candidates, we really appreciate you doing this. Um, I'll give one last shout out to please come out and vote on Tuesday, June 5th. The polls are open noon to 8 at Our Lady of Good Council Church. If you don't know where that is, that's at 111 Worcester Street. Um, once again, thank you all for watching us, and good luck at the polls. Thank you. See you later. Thank you.